Welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club. We are going to get into it today, guys. There's a lot of people, if you're over on Twitter and keep track of cryptocurrencies at all on Twitter, or even on Facebook for that matter, you will know that uh, there's a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt out there right now. A lot of people are saying the top is in and we're done. It's time to go home, turn off the miners. Bitcoin is dead at $60,000. A, a bit mental, guys, but we're going to get into all of that. Uh, but before we do, if you have not, please, please, please do yourself a favor. Do these animals a favor and go over and help the animals out at Emory Farm Sanctuary. A couple bucks, guys, is all that really take all it really takes to help these guys out we get enough people over there donating a few dollars this goes a long ways for these small sanctuaries so as you can see the paypal is on the bottom of this flyer i always leave that as well as their cash app their venmo all kinds of ways to donate to this sanctuary guys so get in the description of this video Go over and help these guys out, please. Much appreciated on my part. I have no real affiliation with these guys, but it is a good cause, guys. And we do need that karma, as I've said before. So, yeah, go help these guys out. Now, we're going to just jump over. And as the title and the thumbnail kind of suggested, Bitcoin's dead. You know, a lot of people are saying it these days. So this is actually a website that tracks the official obituaries, you know, any articles that come out that claim that Bitcoin is dead. And as you can see here, guys, Bitcoin has died 476 times officially. <laughs> so I don't know, guys, we've, you know, we've seen one here, but I guarantee we see more red dots up in here because people are losing their minds. Now, we're going to get into all of that. But before we do, all eyes have been on the escalating conflict in the Middle East because that has been affecting the markets. So... Um, as we, as I have reported a, a few videos before this, you know, Biden seemingly did, was being more diplomatic, trying to de-escalate the situation, got on the phone after Iran attacked Israel and told Netanyahu in Israel, the president, the prime minister of Israel, that we were not going to get pulled into this war. If they attacked Iran back, we were not going to get pulled into this. So. It seemingly was, uh, oh, good, Biden's doing a good thing, de-escalating this whole conflict. And then today, guys, the uh, White House says that we are going to hit Iran with new sanctions. <laughs> so Biden, you know, seemingly comes out. It's, it's always nice to come out and report to everybody, oh, well, I'm trying to de-escalate everything. But but we're not going to support them, but we will give them money. We will give them defense. We'll shoot all the rockets down that come at them. We'll give them money and funding for this war. And now we will sanction their enemies. Uh, but, you know, we're going to de-escalate it. Nice. Nice try, Biden. Good double talk. Um, anyways, guys, when it comes to sanctions like this, this actually brings up a pretty important thing going on in crypto. Because sanctions, uh, you know, the US, the dollar, and the SWIFT payment system is how they, uh, how they effectively do these sanctions, where they, they cut entire com countries off, not just the bad guys, but entire countries. So, uh, Anyways, they, they can do that because it's a centralized system. Now, with blockchain and decentralized uh, cryptocurrencies, they can't really do that so much. So the thing is, guys, we have seen BRICS. It's uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South 
Africa have formed a group. There's many more countries jumping into this with them, but they are trying to go off the dollar because of sanctions like this. They're tired of getting bullied around by the U.S. and their SWIFT uh, payment system. And so they are going off of the dollar so they don't have to deal with, uh, you know, being cut off anymore. So it's interesting, guys, uh, because this is leading more and more into this de-dollarization. And when China and Russia and India and all of these countries go off of the dollar, it is going to tank the dollar. And, you know, if, if you're upset with me saying that Biden is a warmongering butthole, <laughs> then you'll like this next, next part because Trump, in one of his latest interviews with CNBC, said to the host that BRICS de-dollarizing is an act of war. So Trump's just as, as much of a war warmongering butthole as uh, the old Biden. So... And, you know, when when all of these countries do go off of the dollar and the dollar takes a hit. It uh, it's probably fair to say that we may look at another military conflict there and it won't be sold that way, guys. It it never is. You know, you can't sell a war saying, oh, they hurt the dollar. We're going to war. It'll come in the form of terrorism because that is an easy one to sell. You know, fear always sells and terrorism is bad and scary. So that's something we all have the fun of looking forward to also. But guys, here's the thing about BRICS is they, China and India are very familiar with tech and blockchain. China has its own central bank digital currency, so it knows all about blockchain. And it is widely speculated that, that BRICS is going to go to a blockchain payment system to get off of the dollar. And if you look at it, guys, the reason gold has been doing so well lately is because mainly because of China buying just absolute ungodly amounts of gold. But you can see, guys, the two major countries buying gold right now are China and India. Two of the big players in the BRICS. And if you get down here, Brazil's right there also. So three of the five countries in BRICS, in the initial BRICS order, are buying massive amounts of gold. They're in the top 10 buying gold. So it's not hard to, to see all the moving pieces. They're probably going to go to a blockchain technology that is based and backed with gold. So I don't know, guys, that's a that's another thing we've just got to look forward to <laughs> fun times. Uh, but it's all due to actions like this by our government because they feel like they can, you know, sanction people defend people, even though they're saying they're going to de-escalate things. Uh, they, they have no, no real intent to de-escalate anything over there, I, I don't think. And that's going to be spending more money and making inflation go even worse. So yeah, big doom and gloom in this video. Big doom and gloom. Sorry. Sorry about all of this. But guys, here's another thing with the price action lately. If you are feeling like, oh no, should I sell my Bitcoin? Let me just tell you, it is always darkest before the dawn, that old trope, that old uh, cliche. But it, it honestly is pretty true in Bitcoin's case. We see it all the time where you know, paper hands get flushed out and then we continue quickly to the upside. Now, guys, we've had we have this Bitcoin having coming up in two days and 
the thing is, is it's pretty, it's very much a non-event. Like price won't shift on this countdown hitting zero, nor will you get double the amount of Bitcoin. I actually saw a guy on Twitter the other day that was saying he was waiting for the halving so he could buy Bitcoin at $30,000 instead of $60,000. People don't get it, guys. People don't even get it. And so it's, it's interesting. But guys, this is just something to kind of celebrate because as we have seen, look at this, uh, over here on TradeView, you know, we see these green lines are, are the lines that I've put in for each halving. Right now, we're right at that halving. But look at what we did last time. We hit that halving, traded sideways for a little bit, and then just went straight up. I mean, I say straight up, but guys, look at this. We went, we had a serious down here. All of these small downs are very, very much, uh, when you're in it, it feels so much worse than what this is. So um, it's like I say, zoom out. And if you zoom out, like what dip? It doesn't look like we're having any dip up there. But guys, also what I wanted to look at, I'm going to zoom in on this last halving just to, sh just to give you guys some perspective. Because like I've said, we always kind of have this turbulent time right at the halving. So check, check this out. Look at this. Just down, 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 down. And this is on the daily, guys. So this is one, two, three days of just straight down. And you can't really see it, but we did bottom out in this third day. Uh, we, we bottomed out, out clear down. Oh, I can't even... Yeah, clear down here at like 80,080. So if we measure that from this top all the way down to that bottom there, look at that, guys. That is a 20% down move in three days. In these three days, we went down 20%. Okay. <laughs> that that is is sh it should tell you something you know because we we've definitely we our our downward turn this time is much more extended than just three days in t with 20 percent but guys look at this um if we go back zoom back out i mean you can't even see that on on this and then we did all of this afterwards. Now let's zoom in to what's going on right now. Oh, that's not the zoom. Uh, if we zoom in to what's going on right now, it's been much, many more days, but we've gone from this top to this bottom. Oh, and that's the zoom also. Man, I'm on one today. Okay. So this top down to that bottom that we just put in today, that's 18.93%. So that isn't even as big of a correction as we saw during the last halving in three days, guys. And this was 36 days from this top down to this bottom. So just some perspective there, guys, if, if you're ever feeling, you know, I mean, don't get on Twitter right now for one thing, unless you can take it because there's so many people calling for the end of Bitcoin. And yet this is completely normal for Bitcoin, especially with something like this war in the Middle East going on. But guys, Again, let's zoom out. Look at what we've done every halving. Okay, I have to like scroll way down, but like we hit this halving straight up. 
And then we hit this having straight up. And this is a logarithmic chart. So it, it really, like if I, if I go out into the weekly, you can really kind of see, you know, just how big these moves after the halving get. So I don't know, guys. Ignore the FUD. We are not at all over yet. So hold in there. Get off your phone. Stop checking the price every five minutes like I do. And <laughs> go do something. Go get a hobby. Uh, you know, we've got a long ways to go. So I, I don't know. If you're not having fun in it, get out. Because if you can't have fun, it's not worth doing. But I can almost guarantee you that you would you will regret that move in the future so but if it's causing you so much grief get out you know it's not worth it you know the money is not worth putting yourself through all kinds of hell if you can't handle it if you can't stomach it so but it is interesting twitter guys i haven't got i haven't been into crypto twitter until fairly recently um, but it's funny, you get over there and you have all of these people talking about diamond hands and these 30% corrections and it's volatile and I have diamond hands. And, and then something like lately happens and it flushes all of those guys out. So it's just funny to see, you know, all these people bragging that they have diamond hands that and now they're claiming it's over. So <laughs> anyways, Twitter, crypto Twitter, crypto Facebook is just as bad lately. Uh, it, people don't know what's going on. So anyways, guys, stay calm, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.